Good morning, Clay Chalkful. This is Elise Quinn and Julia Petty with our second episode of Keeping Up with Clay Chalkful for the 2019-2020 school year. In honor of Halloween, we are showing different activities to celebrate this season as well as highlighting some of our students and Clay Chalkful alum. First up, we have Chloe and Elizabeth showing us how to make some spooky caramel apples. Next, we have a video highlighting our October students and Teacher of the Month. This is Darius Bordeaux with CCN TV. In this video, we asked the students of the month, what qualifications do you think you have to have to become student of the month? Check it out. Hi, my name is Emily Fitzhugh, and I'm the 12th grade student of the month. Hey, I'm Andrea Leith, and I'm the 11th grade student of the month. My name is Bree, and I'm 10th grade student of the month. I'm Gage Richardson, and I am the 9th grade student of the month. The qualities that I think you have to have to be student of the month is just be kind to everybody, treat everybody how you want to be treated, be respectful, um, do your work. You gotta be confident in yourself and friendly. I think some good qualities you have to have to be student of the month is participating in class and doing your work and just being a good friend to everybody in the class. The qualities I think you need to have for being student of the month is being respectful to the teachers, getting your work done on time, and staying out of trouble. We challenge all of you to take these qualities and apply, apply them to your days at school. And who knows, maybe you'll be the next student of the month. Our next video features a Clay Chalkville alum talking about his path after high school. Everyone these days tells us that we have to go to college, but not everyone tells you other options. We sat down with some CCHS alumni who took different paths instead of going to a four-year school. My name is Aaron McKinney, graduating year is 2016. So my plan while I was in high school was to go to the Air Force and extend my education with computers. Didn't do that exactly. I took a break from school. With taking that break, my dad found a program of the Generation IT program. It was a 12 week boot camp that allowed us to get our A plus certifications. And throughout the course, we practiced interview skills. We got the opportunity to do interviews with managers from different companies, far as UAB regions, Blue Cross Blue Shield. We've spoke with a lot of different companies in different areas. Throughout the course, a lot of us got our A-plus certifications, a lot of us did not. But at the end of the course, at our graduation, we all had different job offers. I ended up having three from Brassville and Gorey, Blue Cross Blue Shield, and Regions. I ended up taking the Regions offer <laughs> and uh, I worked there for a year. So now I'm employed at UAB as a computer technician. I am currently enrolled in school and it is tuition reimbursement. I mean my advice was don't be afraid to not go to college right after high school. I mean, I didn't this three years later, and I'm just not going back to school. I've been just working, not staying at home like a bump on a log. <laughs> As you can see, college isn't the only option right out of high school. Aaron took a non-traditional route and has a job making good money and is going back to school for free. Now to Zach with a trivia video about the history of Halloween. With Halloween right around the corner, we decided to sit down with some students and teachers and see what they know. All right, I'm here with Kendall Gardner. And Quantasia. All right, first question is pumpkin a fruit or vegetable? Vegetable. Vegetable. It's actually a fruit. Halloween parties, what do we traditionally bob for? It was apples. It was apples. All right, where did bobbing for apples originate? I don't even know, bro. Canada. It was ancient Rome. No candy today. What's the most popular candy for Halloween? Uh, candy corn. Chocolate. The answer is chocolate. It's chocolate! Ch All right, I'm here with... Kaiser. And dry. 
All right, first question. How many years has Halloween been around for? 200. Uh, 250. The answer is actually 6,000 years. On which date do we celebrate Halloween? I'll tell you 31st. 31st? All right, y'all both get candy. Which immigrants came to America and thought that pumpkins were easier to carve on Halloween than potatoes? New England. Um, um, man, I forgot. Um, I don't even know. It was the Irish. I'm here with... Miss Snowden. Miss Devon. What festival did Halloween originate from? All Hallows Eve. It was the ancient Celtic festival of Psalm. The night before Halloween was wet for the New Englanders. The, the night before Halloween? Hallow's Eve? It was the cabbage night. At Halloween parties, what do we traditionally bob for? Apples! All right, thank you. Well, we hope you learned something clay chalkful and have a happy Halloween. Now we have an interview with the teachers and senior students of our special ed program. My name is Ms. Crouch. Well, I actually decided I wanted to be a teacher when I was in high school here. I was a senior and they had a sign up to go work at the elementary school. I did not sign up, but somehow my name got on the list. And then I ended up loving it, so that made me decide that I wanted to be a teacher. And growing up, I've always had friends with special needs, and I just grew to love how much they're capable of and what they can do. My name is Brian. I am 18. I love Ms. Crouch. Ms. Crouch has been my teacher for four years. I'm graduating this year. My plan is for when I get done with high school to get a job. I want to get a job at the Publix. My favorite subject is PE. And why do you like PE? I get to socialize with people, different people, and mingle. I cannot stand when people use the word retard because it is so disrespectful and hateful and it is a form of bullying even though people do not um, realize that. So please do not use the word retard because it's hurtful to me, it's hurtful to my kids, and it's hurtful to all their family members. When you see my kids walking in the hallway, give them a high five, a fist bump, or just say hey, because it would seriously make their day. It makes me really sad when my kids are mistreated by other people, and I feel like they're not given a chance to express themselves because they are so much fun, and they're always so happy. They also just want friends, just like anybody else wants a friend. My favorite part about being a teacher is seeing my kids' faces every single day and seeing how happy they are. And I love being at Clay Chalkville because I love this age group and my kids are just beyond sweet. My name is Marcus Beal. I like to dance and I like having friends and I like to talk. I like my teacher. She's nice and I'm happy that I'm finna graduate. My plans after high school are get a job, make money, help my parents around the house, and get a car. I wanna get a job at Pump It Up. I do not like the R word. It's definitely not something I wanna hear, but I feel like it's just a result of being unknowledged about the special education program. And again, the more my students get involved with the general ed population, I feel like the less likely we are to hear that word. When my students are picked on or made fun of, it really upsets me because I just wish everyone can see how great they are, how talented they are, how smart they are, and how capable they are. So if you would just take the time to get to know them, you would see a completely different side. Next up is a countdown of the top five scariest places to go in Alabama. So dear to the art. And camera games with CCN TV. You may have enjoyed going to hunting houses around this time. But did you know in Alabama there are actually really scary places? So we bring a countdown with the top five scariest places in Alabama. Starting the countdown with our number five on our list is the Highway 5 Ghost. The story is from years ago about a girl and boyfriend riding home from prom. They got into an argument, but the crazy thing is she never made it home. Her body was found in a ditch by the road on the next day. But do you know this highway is still open? If a honey house doesn't scare you, I bet visiting this highway will. The address is below. And if you ride on the highway, it is said that she will knock on your windows trying to find her killer. 
no matter if it is day or night. So good luck if you go out there. On to the next. Our number four top scary place in Alabama is Fort Morgan. The old barracks are considered to be the scariest part of the fort. Years ago, a prisoner hung himself in the barracks and you can still hear the hanging prisoner crying. Also, a young woman was drugged into the fort by unknown men. She was beaten and murdered and she still wanders around the fort today seeking justice. This place is also still open, so if your friends say you're too scared, prove them wrong by going to the address right here. If you love to eat and you're not afraid of something scary, then you will love our number three team. This place, the Gaines Ridge Diner Club, is well known for ghosts. Many people have reported hearing screams of a woman and constant cries of a baby. There have also been reports of a woman floating past the window, and also there has been the aroma of pipe smoke, even though there was no one smoking. Since you're already in the area, why not go an hour farther and you'll be at our second to last location. Our second location is St. James Hotel. After the Civil War ended, a man named Benjamin Sterling Tower became the new owner and allowed a group of outlaws led by famous gang leader, robber and murderer, Jesse James to stay at the hotel one night. Several guests have reported seeing the spirits of Jesse James and his girlfriend, Lucinda, as well as a man fully dressed in clothing from the 1800s in room 214, 314, and 315. Lucinda leaves a lovely scene in her path, alerting guests to her presence. James's black dog also hunts the halls of the hotel, and guests have reported sounds of barking with no dog in sight. If you are bold enough to stay at the hotel, you can actually request rooms 214, 314, or 315, the 100 rooms at the St. James Hotel. Well, so far we have had Highway 5 Goals, Fort Morgan, Games Ridge Diner Club, and St. James Hotel. To our top scariest place in Alabama. Breaking in at number one, we have Ghost Bridge. It has been said that the ghost is supposed to be a lady that lived in Edgewater back in the early 1940s that had hired a lady in Bayview to make her wedding dress. It was stated that the girl had gone to her final fitting and was on her way back home with her dress when she was attacked by a pack of wild dogs and killed. There have been many reports of the woman leaving handprints on the windows and even there has been misty figures on the bridge. Permanently being closed. This has been the top five scariest places in Alabama with Cameron Gaines and Odia Zadar from CTN TV. Now for a preview on the student-teacher basketball game happening today. What's up, Clay Chalkwell? This is Gage Horton from CCN TV. Today we sat down with Coach Haney and some student coaches to learn about today's student versus teacher basketball game. Check it out. Uh, we actually did it uh, a few years ago uh, when Miss Raspberry was helping with basketball. We had a, we had a lot of fun with it. Um, so we kind of decided to do it again. It was a, it was a good fundraiser for us, and uh, we had some, some things going on this year that we needed some extra funding for, so we thought we'd try it again. I decided to coach because I think it's going to be fun to coach. I think we're going to have a great time, and I'm coaching the coaches. Uh, yeah, I just thought it was going to be fun. It wasn't the most spots on the roster, so and yeah, I coach with the students. I'm helping my team out because I play basketball. I mean, I think I know what I'm doing. I play varsity, so I'm pretty sure I have a clue what basketball is. I mean, they needed a coach that was going to win. I'm gonna oh, you think you're going to win? I'm going to give him a dog. No cap. Oh, okay. I'm just saying. Okay. Uh, we'll be playing music. Uh, we've got, you know, uh, I think 12 or 13 teachers playing. Uh, we've got some coaches. Uh, the, I, Ms. Bridges, Raspberry, Dickinson, uh, Mr. Phillips, Coach Monso, Rudak, Coach B, myself, Coach Robinson. Uh, I probably left a few out. Uh, Ms. Brown's playing. Uh, so they get to see the teachers kind of, you know, having fun in, in a little different environment. So I think it'll be a good time. I think the coach is going to win because we got a little more experience. We know what we're doing. And I'm a coach, so of course we're going to win. I hate to lose. I'm a winner. <laughs> so we're obviously, I'm, my team's obviously going to win, you know, just going to try to play quick, try to play fast, knock down some threes, you know what I'm saying? Might get a few dunks. That's pretty much we it. We got Coach Rudy. You ain't going to get no dunk. We're doubling him the whole game. <laughs> um, Y'all come and support us. It's only $3 to get in. And then the game will be on Thursday on Halloween. Don't forget to buy your ticket and support our women's basketball team. Tickets will be sold today during lunch if you have not bought one yet. Finally, in honor of Principal Appreciation Week, we went around the school asking students and teachers what they appreciate the most about our principal, Mr. Lee. As some of you may not know, this month is Principal Appreciation Month. We sat down with some students and some teachers 
to see what they love most about Mr. Lee. So Mr. Lee is a good principal to me because he's just there for students. He doesn't overwhelm them with stuff. If they have a problem, you can like come to him and he's not gonna make you feel bad about it or make, like blame you completely for it. Hey, my name is Ethan. Uh, Mr. Lee, he's a very nice, generous man. He makes sure all the students are straight and on task. Hi, my name is Laura, and what I love most about Mr. Lee is that he's kind and understanding, and he treats all of his students like his own kids. My name is Justice Harris. I'm in 10th grade, and what I like about Mr. Lee is how we are allowed to have so much fun and have so many opportunities here at Clicks Off. I'm very in your school. And what do you like about Mr. Lee? I mean, they have flowers, and, and uh, Nice. Can I have fun? Mr. Lee is so nice. He helps us in our classroom. He takes good care of us every single day. My name is Jora. I'm in the 11th grade. And the reason I like Mr. Lee is because he always pushes us to be great. Hi, my name is Jeremiah Theus. I'm in 11th grade. The one thing I can say about Mr. Lee is that he's the, one of the most enthusiastic and inspirational people I know. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, Coach Monzo. I am a life PE teacher here and also uh, in the head boys basketball coach. Uh, probably, you know, the biggest thing I appreciate about Mr. Lee and the job he does here is um, not only does he manage the school and with character integrity and uh, a student's first mindset, uh, but just as a boss and as a leader, um, he gives us the resources we need um, to succeed and to be successful, but then he also allows us to do our job and to put our stamp on, on what we're doing uh, that, that makes it unique to us as well. So appreciate you, Mr. Lee. Hey, I'm Megan, I'm a senior. Um, I really appreciate what Mr. Lee does for us as a student body and he really cares about us and yeah. Mr. Lee is my favorite. One day, I ain't had no lunch money and I was sad and Mr. Lee, he was like, I got you man, and he gave me lunch money. Sister Principal Dallas, a um, couple things about Mr. Lee. Um, one, just an outstanding guy someone who's dedicated to the well-being of every student in this building and the teachers in this building. Someone who wants to see others grow professionally in any capacity that they choose and one who ultimately wants to see the success of every student in this building. So if I had to sum up the one word that would just capture the essence of Mr. Lee, uh, it would be driven. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for everything you do, Mr. Lee. Thank you for watching this episode of Keeping Up with Clay Chapel. Tune in next month for our Thanksgiving episode.